You know, looking at it today, you would never know Highland Park was once one of the wealthiest cities in our state. Today, it has lost most of its people, its schools, and its businesses. Tonight, 7 investigator Ross Jones takes an in-depth look at what caused such a rapid decline and Highland Park's fight for a future. I remember Highland Park what it was. Yeah, they had something to be proud of once, but not anymore. To tell the story of Highland Park is to tell a tale of two cities. There is the Highland Park that gave birth to the assembly line and forged the middle class, with schools and hospitals and homes that were the envy of the world. They had everything, beautiful tree-lined streets. You know, I used to dream, oh, I'm gonna move there one day. And there is the Highland Park we know today. Its factories empty, schools long shuttered, where prosperity exists only as a memory. You beat down a person for so long that they give up hope. They give up, their dreams die. Their hope is destroyed. That's what, that's, I mean, that's what the city of Highland Park has done. Lorne McGee has lived in Highland Park for the last 22 years, watching progress spread all along Woodward Avenue, he says, everywhere but here. You see it from downtown Detroit to Midtown, but when it gets to Highland Park, it leapfrogs. You see Ferndale developing, you see Berkeley developing. I want Highland Park X. what are we not doing? This city tied its fortunes to the auto industry, first to Ford Motor Company and then Chrysler. At its peak in the 1930s, more than 50,000 called the city home. But as quickly as those jobs came, almost overnight, they disappeared. The city is facing the reality of losing 57% of its job base a total of 8,500 jobs. If you look at Highland Park's population in 2021, it's less than it was in 1910. Ford left, Chrysler left, and we've just seen that continuous degradation when you don't have the population, you don't have the tax base, the vacant housing, etc. What is left is a standard of living that would not be allowed anywhere along Woodward Avenue, but here. The city's library, long a jewel in the center of town, has been closed for 20 years. All but one school in the district is shuttered. There hasn't been a high school here for seven years. Where do kids in Highland Park go for high school? They go to Ferndale, they go to Hamtramck, River Rouge, they go to Detroit. There has been no new housing built here for nearly a decade. 1,500 vacant lots dot the city's 2.9 square miles, lots the city doesn't maintain. I will walk in there, but I don't know. I don't know what's in there. Here's a sign that says Highland Park is working for you. During Detroit's darkest days, it was said, would the last person to leave please turn out the lights? Well, the lights have long been out in Highland Park, literally. In 2011, DTE pulled 1,400 light poles straight from the ground after the city failed to pay its bills. I leave out of here during the winter time at night and I have a CCW, I have to have my, my weapon in my hand because you can't see anything. Dorothy Grigsby is owner of Shep's Barber and Beauty Shop on Hamilton Avenue, founded 78 years ago by her uncle, who passed it down to her. If your uncle walked through the door right now, would he recognize this city? No, oh Lord, no, no, no. We are the only business left in Highland Park on Hamilton. There's no more businesses down this way. On almost every block, you'll find burned out buildings left to rot. The cost to knock them down, just too high. I'm looking at some of the same buildings that were vacant, dilapidated when I moved here 22 years ago. When it seems like the administration is powerless, how do you think the citizens feel? To turn its troubles around, the city needs its leaders pulling in the same direction. But the mayor and council have long been at odds, and public meetings quickly turn into spectacles. This is my meeting, you, you can wrap it up. to be in this building? Yeah, I got permission Come to be who? in this building. I'm the city council president. The city has already had three different emergency managers, with some fearing a fourth could be on the way after an August Court of Appeals ruling ordering the city to pay a $21 million debt over unpaid water bills. But how in the world is the city gonna pay off that debt? I don't know. That was a tipping point that said, I'm, I'm no longer taking this. I went and had some signs made. And so after 22 years of fighting to bring his city back, Lord McGee resorted to the only thing he hadn't tried. Drive through town and you might see him leading a one-man protest up and down Woodward Avenue of what his city has become. It's gotten to the point where people don't even realize they deserve better because they think this is just the way it is. 
They don't, they don't remember when Highland Park was a better city. Wherever the city goes from here, it'll have a new leader come January 1st. For the first time since 2016, controversial Mayor Hubert Yap will not appear on the ballot. And the Highland Parkers we talked to are optimistic that new leadership could mean new hope. I'm Ross Jones, 7 Action News. You certainly have to hope so. Ross always does such great work with his investigations and giving a voice to the people who really need it, especially those in Highland Park who have been asking for it for a long time now. And certainly those residents have to hope that uh, this report can lead perhaps to a larger discussion and uh, some answers ultimately that will help that city. Yes, indeed. All right, let's take